G'day folks and thanks for joining me. It's Greg Burke here talking Australian carnivorous plants for World Carnivorous Plants Day. Now when people think about Australia they often think beautiful red sandy deserts, big monoliths, sandy beaches, occasionally tropical rainforests and of course killer wildlife. But not often do people think about its carnivorous flora. But did you know that Australia is home to the greatest diversity of carnivorous plants found anywhere on the globe? Almost 300 species from six genera call Australia home. And this incredible diversity is due in part to Australia's long periods of geological stability. And this stability, particularly in Western Australia and the North, has um, allowed a great number of species to evolve including some of the strangest and most unique carnivorous plants found anywhere. In contrast, the east coast of Australia, um, with its cool climate areas and temperate forests, uh, whilst there's a lot of areas that are suitable habitat for carnivorous plants, the diversity uh, remains fairly low. Australia's tropical rainforest um, covers a small area of northern Australia uh, and unlike those forests in Southeast Asia, which we know of as high diversity of carnivorous plants, in Australia these are low in diversity of carnivorous plants. It is however home to some very unique and uh, unusual rainforest sundews. The species of sundews known from Australia's rainforests uh, are found in very small pockets of rainforest, often beside creeks, uh, waterfalls, or occasionally in dense forest. And because it rains so much, these plants don't catch a lot of prey. In fact, uh, many of the plants can, can be seen without prey on them at all. They rely more on their ability to photosynthesize in the low light levels and catch the occasional uh, small amounts of nutrients that are blown in. Another important factor that has affected Australia's carnivorous plant diversity is fire. Now fire has influenced Australia for the past 25 to 30 million years. As the continent drifted north, it dried out and fire became a, a large part of uh, shaping uh, the plant diversity and in fact drove evolution of a lot of plant species in Australia. The northern monsoonal grasslands uh, are home to a lot of carnivorous plants. They typically burn annually and this removes competition from smaller herbaceous plants and allows species like Drosera, Biblis and Utricularia to thrive. However, in recent years we've seen African grasses uh, move into some of this habitat and this has caused a significant problem in that um, the plants grow thicker, denser and then when they burn, they burn with a greater in intensity and this kills off some of the comp competition as well as the seed bank and the drosera which are um, you know, right close to the soil surface. However, the drosera are uh, particularly adapted to fire and in particular the section Lasiocephala or the Pediolaris sundews as they're commonly named are particularly well adapted to extremes of drought and wet, um, fire and heat. And uh, in the top end where they're most prevalent, you see plants that are burnt over by these annual fires and they quickly recover, protected by their dense indumentum in the center of the plant and on the leaves. And you'll often see after a fire plants burst back into growth flower and set seed to take advantage of the fact that the competition has been removed. If we look closely at the center of a drosera plant you can see those dense hairs that protect the plant from the burning uh, fire. They also protect it from the heat and the dry period and they collect uh, dew in the early mornings to help push moisture down into the plant to keep it from desiccating during drier times. 
Another common group of sungees found across northern Australia is the Drosera section Arachnopus, or the Indica complex as it's commonly known. These plants are common right across the top end from swampy areas into lakes and right through into Australia's desert country where they're found in the most arid of lands in central Australia. These plants are typically annual so they germinate following wet season and uh, they'll grow rapidly through the wet, catch as much prey as possible and produce huge numbers of seeds to allow them to survive the dry times and give them the best chance of recolonizing. Another genus of carnivorous plants in Australia is the Biblis or rainbow plants. These are predominantly found across the tropical north but they extend into the desert country with one annual species and down into the southwest with two perennial temperate species. Now these plants were thought to be passive trapping sticky plants until recently when it was discovered that the tentacles actually collapse on the plant when stimulated by uh, animal prey and draw the prey into the stems where they're in contact with secondary glands that digest and dissolve the prey. Spectacular to see uh, out in the field when they're in large numbers and also in the swamps particularly in Cape York in the northeast where one species Biblis aquatica grows in open water uh, often just floating not affixed to the to the soil below they just float around and these plants um, will live for several seasons if conditions are conducive. Tropical pitcher plants of the genus Nepenthes are also present in Australia just four taxa are known and they occur only on the Cape York Peninsula in northeastern Australia. All four species are closely related to Nepenthes mirabilis and they occur in swampy regions, often very exposed areas uh, where the plants occur alongside Drosera and Utricularia. In the cool climate and temperate regions, as I mentioned earlier, there are very few species it's not very diverse but um, we do have some quite spectacular plants in this region the ancient alpine species drosera arcturi and drosera murfidi are found in the alpine regions with drosera murfidi restricted uh, just to tasmania these plants are often under snow for several months of the year they emerge from dormancy in the late spring produce their couple of carnivorous leaves, hopefully catch a little bit of prey, set seed, and then they die down to non-carnivorous leaves for the winter period. Drosera bionata is one of the more spectacular plants found in Australia. Uh, these temperate sundews have multi-branched leaves and the leaves will either divide once or up to 50 times to have over 100 terminal points on the leaves and they place the leaves above vegetation uh, in a way that a spider web would act. So prey flying through the vegetation or looking for a landing platform is often found stuck to these leaves and then slowly digested. And because these leaves are so large and multi-divided, they can catch hundreds of prey items at any one time. These plants occur in swamps, uh, in sand dune country in the, the shallow depressions at the back of sand dunes and at a few locations in the Blue Mountains near Sydney they occur on cliff faces and you get these spectacular displays of plants dangling from the cliff face. Another large group of sundews found predominantly in Australia are the tuberous sundews. These are characterized by their tubers that have produced well under the soil sometimes up to half a meter deep and this allows the plants to remain dormant in periods where conditions are too harsh for growth above the ground. So usually this is in the summer period, but it can be just in periods of drought. Uh, the plants are diverse in their, their range of habits with rosetted sundews. We've got climbing ones that can climb up to three meters tall 
and multi-stemmed and branched uh, plants as well. This is probably the, the most um, diverse group of Australian sundews and um, their floral structures, the colours of the flowers and some of them are sweetly scented as well uh, are amongst the, the most beautiful in the genus. Aldrovanda vesiculosa, the waterwheel plant, is also found in Australia. It's not very common but it's found in a few locations in the southern half of the country um, quite a few waterways in the north but uh, many of these are inaccessible or infested with crocodiles so they're very difficult to access and very difficult to find those plants. The last major group of sundews found in Australia are the pygmy sundews of the subgenus Bryastrum. These plants are tiny, some of them less than a centimetre across but they can be uh, up to about 10 centimetres tall and a few centimetres across. Uh, but it's the flowers that are really spectacular in this group. Uh, the flowers are often larger than the rosettes themselves and really brightly coloured. Orange, uh, pink, yellows are, are fairly common in the pygmy sundews. Again, the diversity of this group is uh, centred around Western Australia and there's only two species in this subgenus that are found outside of Western Australia. Back to the tropical north of Australia and the genus Utricularia or the bladderworts is incredibly diverse through this region. We see all sorts of colours, shapes and sizes in the swamps, particularly around Darwin where up to 25 species can be found in one small area, each one picking its time to flower and you'll often arrive at a swamp to find one species in flower and just a week or two later a completely different suite of species flowering in the swamp. Now these plants are characterized by their bladder traps which attract prey and suck the prey inside the traps. And these plants are incredibly effective at catching prey. Tens of thousands of mosquito larvae are consumed by some of these plants in the swamps of the top end. Of course these plants occur in eastern Australia and the southwest as well where fewer species occur but they often produce spectacular displays spreading across huge fields of grassland and swamps. One species in southwestern Australia is particularly unique to the genus. It's a tuber forming plant and it's the only known Australian species to be bird pollinated, Utricularia menziesii is often found on granite outcrops where it occurs in very shallow granitic soils or peaty soils but it also occurs in shallow depressions on clay pans uh, and other wet areas around the southwest. Now of course I've left Australia's most spectacular and unusual carnivorous plant to last and that is Cephalotus follicularis or the Albany pitcher plant. These plants are more closely related to cabbages than they are all the other carnivorous plants that we've talked about. Really unusual, spectacular little plant only found in the southwest corner of Western Australia. It's a pitfall trap, so very similar operation to a Nepenthes that attracts its prey. The prey slips in on the rim of the pitcher and falls in where it's digested by the juices excreted by the plant. This plant feeds predominantly on ants and that's its main source of prey but it'll also take other small things like weevils and any other crawling prey or indeed flying prey around the swamps. Now that's just a very quick look at Australia's carnivorous plants. I hope you've enjoyed. Enjoy the rest of your World Carnivorous Plants Day and we'll talk to you again soon. The International Carnivorous Plant Society wants you to be successful with your plants. We welcome growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. We started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate these spectacular plants. Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask. We don't bite. But our plants do.